As my car stopped on the deserted highway, my heart began to race. The engine's desperate whines echoed in the stillness of the night, a haunting reminder of my predicament. Panic clenched my chest as I realized I was completely alone, surrounded by darkness that seemed to stretch on endlessly. I fumbled for my phone, but the screen remained stubbornly black, its battery drained from hours of navigation through unfamiliar roads. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I knew I had no choice but to venture out into the unknown. Grabbing a flashlight from the glove compartment, I stepped out of the car and onto the empty road. The sound of my footsteps echoed ominously in the silence, each step sending shivers down my spine. The air was thick with an oppressive stillness, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves or distant howl of a coyote. I walked for what felt like hours, the darkness pressing in on me from all sides. Every shadow seemed to hide unseen horrors, and I found myself jumping at the slightest sound. My mind raced with thoughts of wild animals, or worse, lurking in the blackness, waiting to pounce. But despite my fear, I pressed on, driven by the desperate hope of finding help. The road stretched out endlessly before me, disappearing into the darkness like a twisted ribbon leading to nowhere. Just when I felt like I couldn't take another moment of the suffocating stillness, I saw a flickering light in the distance. Relief flooded through me as I stumbled towards it, my legs heavy with exhaustion. As I drew closer, I saw that it was a small gas station, its neon sign buzzing faintly in the night. I burst through the door, my breath coming in ragged gasps as I tried to explain my situation to the attendant. He eyed me warily, his expression unreadable in the dim light. But as I spoke, his features softened, and he nodded understandingly. After a quick phone call, he assured me that a tow truck was on its way. As I waited, I huddled in a corner of the gas station, sipping on a lukewarm cup of coffee as I tried to calm my racing heart. But despite the reassurance of the attendant's words, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. The memory of the deserted highway, the oppressive darkness, and the sense of isolation clawed at the edges of my mind, threatening to overwhelm me. But as the first light of dawn broke through the horizon, painting the sky with streaks of orange and pink, a sense of calm washed over me. The darkness that had gripped me for so long began to recede, replaced by the warm embrace of the rising sun. And as the tow truck pulled up outside, ready to take me back to civilization, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the small moments of clarity that come after facing the unknown. Though the memory of that night would stay with me forever, I knew that I had faced my fears and emerged unscathed. As I climbed into the tow truck, leaving the deserted highway behind me, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. The journey ahead would be long, but I knew that I would never forget the night my car stopped on that desolate road and the fear that gripped me in its icy embrace. But for now, as the sun rose high in the sky, I allowed myself to relax, knowing that I was safe at last. The remembrance of that chilling morning still grips me with fear whenever I recall it. It was a wintry dawn, the sky draped in an inky darkness as I embarked on my solitary drive through the narrow, Tulane Road that wound its way through my quiet country town. My destination, the radio station where I hosted a show, an early morning routine I had grown accustomed to. Little did I know, this particular journey would etch itself into my memory like a nightmare. The silence of the early hour enveloped me as I navigated the deserted road, the only sounds being the soft hum of the engine and the crackling of static from the radio. The solitude was both comforting and eerie, a feeling of isolation that seemed to seep into my bones. As I maintained a steady speed of sixty miles per hour, my mind wandered, lost in the quiet of the pre-dawn hours. But then, without warning, my gaze was drawn to something out of the ordinary. A pale face, almost ghostly in its appearance, pressed against the glass of my driver's side window. A jolt of terror shot through me as I locked eyes with this unexpected intruder. My heart pounded in my chest as I struggled to make sense of what I was seeing. 
Was this a trick of the light? A figment of my imagination? Or something far more sinister? For a fleeting moment, I entertained the notion that I had encountered a ghost, a restless spirit haunting the lonely stretch of road in the early hours of the morning. But reality soon asserted itself, dispelling any notion of the supernatural. This was no ghost. This was something else entirely. Before I could fully comprehend the gravity of the situation, the face vanished, leaving me in a state of bewildered terror. I glanced frantically in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the specter lingering behind me, but there was nothing. Only darkness, stretching out into the abyss. Shaken to my core, I continued on my journey, the memory of that pale face burned into my mind like a brand. My thoughts raced as I tried to rationalize what I had seen, but the more I tried to make sense of it, the more unnerved I became. When I finally reached the radio station, I found myself unable to focus on my work. The image of that ghostly face replayed in my mind like a relentless loop, each iteration sending shivers down my spine. I knew I had to do something, anything, to make sense of what had happened. Turning to the internet for solace, I searched for any news that might shed light on the mysterious encounter. And then I found it. A headline caught my eye. Tragic accident on Tulane Road. My heart plummeted as I read the details of the article. It was the same road, the same stretch of asphalt where I had seen that pale face just minutes before. According to the report, a man had been struck by a truck at the exact spot where I had been driving. The timing was too uncanny to be a coincidence. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. The face I had seen pressed against my window wasn't a ghost at all. It was a man, a desperate soul teetering on the edge of life and death. He had hurled himself across the road in front of my vehicle, a final, desperate act of self-destruction. But he hadn't made it. The next car driving in the opposite direction had struck him, ending his life in an instant. The realization left me reeling, the weight of it pressing down on me like a suffocating blanket. Unable to shake the guilt and horror that consumed me, I knew I had to do something to ease the burden of guilt for the driver who had unknowingly ended the man's life. With trembling hands, I dialed the number for the California Highway Patrol and relayed my story, hoping against hope that it would bring some measure of closure to the tragic events that had unfolded that morning. But whether my message reached the driver... I'll never know. All I can do is carry the memory of that fateful morning with me, a reminder of the fragility of life and the darkness that lurks just beyond the edge of the road. And as I continue my journeys along that same stretch of highway, I can't help but feel a sense of unease, knowing that the road holds secrets far darker than any ghost story. That day still sends shivers down my spine. It was just a routine drive with my mom, nothing out of the ordinary. But then, out of nowhere, everything spiraled into chaos. As we cruised along the highway, my mom honked at a guy in a massive pickup truck who was drifting into our lane. Little did we know, he didn't take kindly to being corrected. In a fit of rage, he sped up and rammed into our minivan from the side, sending us into a tailspin towards the rail on the side of the highway. My heart pounded in my chest as I gripped the seat, the world outside a blur of motion and fear. I could hear my mom's panicked cries as she fought to regain control of the vehicle, but it was no use. We careened towards the edge, the other side a terrifying thirty-foot drop. In a moment of sheer terror, we collided with another car, sending them flying towards the edge as well. It felt like time stood still as we teetered on the brink of disaster, the sound of twisting metal and breaking glass filling the air. But then, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, my mom slammed on the brakes. The sudden jolt caused the front of the car to dip down slightly, hitting the rail in just the right way. It was enough to bring us to a stop mere inches from the edge. As the dust settled and the chaos subsided, a sense of disbelief washed over me. We were alive. Somehow, against all odds, we had survived. 
The officer who investigated the incident later told us that if my mom hadn't reacted in that split second, we would have gone flying over the edge. But the terror of that day didn't end there. It wasn't until later that we learned the horrifying truth. The truck driver who had caused the accident was on drugs. The realization sent a chill down my spine, knowing that our lives had been endangered by someone under the influence. In the days and weeks that followed, my mom struggled with panic attacks, the trauma of the accident lingering long after the physical wounds had healed. And as for me, I made a silent vow to myself that I would never honk at anyone on the highway for as long as I lived. The memory of that day serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk just beyond the asphalt. But it also serves as a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the resilience that can emerge from the depths of despair. The day had started with a sense of excitement as I set out on my hiking adventure. The crisp morning air filled my lungs, and the promise of exploration beckoned me forward. Little did I know that the events of that day would turn into a nightmare I couldn't escape. As I trekked along the winding trail, the beauty of the wilderness surrounded me. Tall trees swayed gently in the breeze, and the chirping of birds provided a soothing soundtrack to my journey. But as I neared the end of the trail, a sense of unease began to creep over me. The first hint of trouble came as I emerged from the trees and caught sight of the highway below. The sound of screeching tires shattered the peaceful atmosphere, followed by the sickening crunch of metal on metal. My heart leaped into my throat as I realized that something terrible had happened. Curiosity mingled with fear as I made my way towards the edge of the highway, where a scene of chaos unfolded before me. Smoke billowed from the wreckage of two cars, their twisted frames a grim testament to the violence of the collision. The air was thick with the acrid stench of burning rubber, and my stomach churned at the sight before me. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to do. But as I saw other hikers rushing to the scene, their faces pale with shock, I knew that I couldn't just stand by and do nothing. With trembling hands I approached the wreckage, my heart pounding in my chest. The sight that greeted me was like something out of a nightmare. One car lay on its side, its windows shattered and its occupants trapped inside. The other had careened off the road, its roof crushed beneath the weight of a fallen tree. Without a second thought, I joined the other hikers in a frantic effort to help. Adrenaline surged through my veins as we worked together, pulling twisted metal and shattered glass away from the injured. But despite our best efforts, it soon became clear that we were in over our heads. The injured cried out in pain as we struggled to free them from the wreckage, and the fear in their eyes was almost too much to bear. As the minutes stretched into what felt like hours, a sense of helplessness washed over me. The sound of approaching sirens provided a glimmer of hope, but it was quickly overshadowed by the overwhelming sense of dread that hung in the air. Finally, the ambulances arrived their flashing lights cutting through the darkness like beacons of hope. Paramedics rushed to the scene, their expertise a welcome relief in the midst of chaos. With their help, we were able to extricate the remaining survivors and transport them to the hospital. As I watched the ambulances disappear into the distance, a profound sense of sadness washed over me. The events of that day had shaken me to my core and the memory of the fear and desperation in the eyes of the injured would haunt me for years to come. But amidst the tragedy, there was also a glimmer of hope. The bravery and selflessness of the hikers who had come to the aid of strangers reminded me that even in the darkest of times, there is still light to be found in the kindness of others. As I made my way back to the trailhead, the sun sinking low on the horizon— I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the simple act of being alive. The events of that day had reminded me of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing every moment we have on this earth.